program is rated GE. Content carried in here is suitable for general family viewing. Welcome our viewers, the students and the teachers who are watching us today. My name is Teacher Duncan Guadima. I'm a social studies teacher and also KCPE facilitator for social studies CRE. Welcome to today's lesson. Uh, and in today's lesson we're going to cover topic four, which is resources and economic activities. This is a topic that is very wide and very, very challenging in most of the, uh, some, to some of the students. Uh, so today we are, we are going to handle topic four and we'll be looking at the specific areas that are most commonly examined in KCPE so that you are able to prepare for your exams. Now, topic four, resources and economic activities, this is an area that has got very, very subtop very many subtopics, and today we're going to look at just a few of them, at least uh, nine of them. So, this is social studies for standard eight, and we're going to cover resources and economic resources and economic activities and in, the, in today's lesson we want to cover the following subtopics the sub, uh, the following subtopics one we'll be looking at mining number two we'll be looking at multipurpose river projects number three we'll be looking at forestry number four we'll be looking at industry fishing wildlife and tourism trade transport and lastly, we'll be looking at urbanization. So those are the nine subtopics that are most commonly examined in KCPE. And we'll be looking, we will start with mining. We will start with mining. We look at what is tested or what is examined in KCPE on mining. Now, the definition of mining, we all know it is the extraction of minerals from the earth surface. But the, in this topic, the learner should be able to look at, one, minerals that are most commonly examined that we will be looking at, two, the methods of mining, and three, areas where they are mined, and lastly, the uses of these minerals. The most commonly examined minerals are, one, we have soda ash, Number two, we have gemstone. We also have diatomite. We have lospa. We have sand. We have salt. We have limestone. And we also have petroleum. So in this topic, the candidate must be able to, one, know the mineral, where it is mined, where uh, the area which is, where it is located, and lastly, the uses. And as you can see on the screen, there is a summary of these minerals. Flospa, for example, it is it is mined through open cast mining, and it is mined in Kimwarer. Number two, you have limestone. It is also mined through open cast. Number four, we have uh, uh, diatomite. We have also have gemstone, salt. We have gold. We have soda ash, and we have petroleum. This meant these are minerals are mined using different uh, methods of mining. And you can see that most of the minerals in Africa, or in Kenya rather, because these are the minerals that uh, we have looked, they are the minerals that are mined in Kenya. Soda ash, we have limestone, we have lospa, we also have uh, salt, we have diatomite. So these are the main minerals that are mined in Kenya. And we have said that you should be able to know where they are located, their uses, and also the place where they are 
mind. So for the candidate, this is a summary for you on mining. You should be able to know minerals, method of mining areas, and also uses. Something else that you should also know on mining is the effects of, of mining on the effects of mining on the environment. What are the effects of mining on the on the environment? Mostly, when this question uh, is set, they normally ask about the negative effect. What are the negative effects of mining on the uh, environment? So our TY quiz is, you use the number that you can see on your screen to give us the answer. Use that number. Which one of the following is a negative effect of mining on the environment? Which one of the following is a negative effect of, of mining on the environment? So use that number that is uh, on your screen to uh, send us your answer. Number two, that is mining, is called forestry. Forestry is also an area that is most commonly examined. And in this topic, a learner should be able to know, one, planted forest, and two, natural forest. These are the two areas that, a learner should, that you as a candidate should be able to know, planted forest and also natural forest. In the planted forest, you should also know the areas where planted forests are found and on natural forest we should also know the areas where they are, are found number three or number two on planted uh, forest you should also know the characteristics the characteristics of characteristics of planted forest and also on natural forest the characteristics of natural forest and as you can see on the screen that natural forests are most commonly found on uh, on they are most commonly found uh, or grown on their own. And they are divided into two. We have highland and lowland. And this, uh, these, uh, natural, these natural uh, forests, they are most commonly found in the areas of Kakamega, the Nyambane, Ndare, Kaimusi, Mount Kenya, Timboroa, Nyandarua, Mau, Malava, Marsabit, Ngong Hills, and Mount Elgon. What about uh, planted forests? Planted forests, they are established through human efforts. And they are most commonly found in areas on the slopes of Mount Kenya. They are most commonly found on Limur, in Limuru, Timboroa, Molo, Tarbo, slopes of Mount Elgon, Njabini, and Moise Bridge, and also Nandi Hills. Now, on this planted and natural forest, you should know the trees that are found in the planted and the trees that are found in the natural forest. Most commonly asked question is, the trees that are most commonly found in the planted forest, they are softwood. They are softwood. Whereas in the natural forest, they are hardwood. They are hardwood. Now let us look at, let us look at examples of planted forests uh, uh, trees that are found in the planted forest and trees that are found in the natural forest. Let us look at types of trees now found in the planted and natural forest. Now, in the natural forest, we have trees such as muvule, we have trees such as camphor, we also have uh, trees such as mahogany, milk oak, among others. That is all about the hardwood trees. They are most commonly, uh, they, they are camphor, we have mvule, uh, elgontic, mahogany, meru oak. And we have said that they are mainly hardwood. What about uh, planted forest? Planted forest, we have, they are mostly uh, softwood, and you can see them on your screen. We have cypress, we have cedar, we have eucalyptus, and we also have spine. Another question that you should also know, or another area that you should also know on forestry is problems, problems facing forests, problem fa for, uh, facing forestry, which is the main problem facing forestry. That is a question that is most commonly examined even in KCPE. And in problem, you should only know the main problem. Because here we are only dealing with the main problems. So the main problem facing uh, forestry is deforestation, which is cutting down of trees. Is deforestation, which is cutting down of trees. And then also on deforestation, after you have known the definition of deforestation, 
after you have run the, def uh, the definition of deforestation, a candidate must be in a position to understand the effects of deforest deforestation. The candidate should be able uh, to be in a position to understand the effects of deforest their deforestation. And all these effects are all negative. There is no any negative or positive effect of deforestation on human activities. Uh, some of these effects include we have an uh, increase in soil erosion, we have loss of the species, we have reduction of forest production, and also cutting down of trees may also lead to desertification. Then still on this uh, forestry, we have looked at the problem, then you should also know conservation measures. Conservation measures. How do you conserve forests? How do we conserve forest? And remember here, we are also still looking at main. We are still looking at main, uh, main way of conserving forests. And the main way uh, the government can help to conserve forests is to create awareness, to create awareness or educating, educating the citizens on the importance of conserving the environment. That's about forestry. And then number three, let us look at industries. Now, industries, industries, this is an area that is most commonly examined even in KCP, and we'll be looking at uh, some of these areas that are most commonly examined. Some of the industries that have been, uh, that have been examined in some of the years, we have one, Juakal industry that we'll be looking at today. Two, we have service industry. Three, we have a processing industry. Four, we have assembly industry. And lastly, we have manufacturing industry. Manufacturing industry. So the candidates who are looking, who are watching at us, I have a TY quiz for you. What is the other name for service industry? And what is the other name for processing industry? What is the other name for assembly industry? And what is the other name for? A manufacturing industry and also the other name for Juwakali industry. That is a question that is most commonly examined. Now let us look at examples of these industries uh, because in an exam they can, you can be asked which one of the following is not an example of an industry, uh, let's say for example processing industry. Let us look at processing industry. Processing industry they mainly deal with the uh, uh, they may, they involve in the first stage of changing raw materials from one form to another. And ma mainly processing industry, they are categorized into uh, food and non-food processing industries. Then we have also examples are there. Manufacturing industries, you can also see, uh, they use raw materials to make final products. Then you have assembly industry. They put together parts that have been already produced uh, elsewhere to make product then you have examples then service industry is also they provide services that uh, other people and other industries need now a ty quiz for the students who are watching us ty quiz use the number that is down there to give us the correct answer on on uh, industries which is the most commonly uh, the most most the most commonly industry that employs most commonly industry that employs that employs many people in eastern africa employs many people in eastern africa which type of industry is that which type of industry employs most of the people in eastern africa that is your ty quiz use that number that is uh, down there to give us the correct answer then on the Juakali industry, which is an area that has been most commonly examined in KCPE, it is also known as uh, cottage industry or fabrication industry. These ones, you use the number that is uh, on your screen to give us your answer. Then on industries also, you should also be able to know the factors influencing location of industry. Remember, all these industries do not base on the same. There is a factor that will lead to service industry, processing industry, assembly industry, and manufacturing industry. So these factors, they are different based on the, the type of industry that 
you have or the type of industry that you have been asked. For example, if a candidate is asked, why do you think Del Monte industry is located in Ithaca? Why do you think Del Monte industry is located in Ithaca? That is a question on the industries. Also, why do you think Mumias Sugar Company Mumias Sugar Company is located where it is? Mumias Sugar Company. And then lastly, there's this question that asks about why do you think Bamburi, a question on Bamburi mining. Why has it, what, what which is reason uh, leads to that? So all these ones, the answer is the same. So the students and the teachers who are watching us use that number to give me the correct answer. Which factor has led to the location of Del Monte industry in Ithaca, uh, Mumias, Sugar, where it is, and also the Bamburi mining, uh, you give those factors. So that is about uh, industries. Uh, and then we have also looked at mining, we have looked at forestry, we have looked at industries. Let us look at something else that is most commonly examined in KCPE so that we give a summary and wait for you to revise. The second, the other area is fishing. In fishing, you are supposed to know one, traditional methods of fishing, traditional methods of fishing, traditional methods of fishing. Number two, methods of preserving fish, methods of preserving fish. Number three, methods, uh, modern methods of fishing, modern methods of fishing. And then number four, fishing grounds. Fishing grounds. And then lastly, you should also know uh, fisheries that are found in the selected fishing grounds that we'll be looking at. So to start with the traditional methods of fishing, these ones you know, an example is harpooning, is an example of a traditional method of fishing. And then methods of preserving fish. Here, this question, Examiners will look at the most economic, the most economic method of preserving fish and the most expensive. So as you are following, you can say you can chat with us. Give me the the, the economic method of preserving fish and the the most expensive method of preserving fish. On the modern methods of fishing, here there are so many, and mostly the examiners will one they will draw a diagram for you. They'll draw a diagram for you and ask you uh, which method of fishing is that. Then, still on the modern methods of fishing, they can still draw, and then they ask each one of the following fish is not uh, caught using the method of fishing that have been shown on the diagram. Look at fishing grounds. Now, in fishing grounds, fishing grounds, uh, fishing grounds, this is areas where fishing takes place. And in we have inland and marine fishing grounds. And examples are on your screen. You can see them there. We have uh, Lake Turukana, Baringo, uh, Victoria, Naivasha, Jipe, Shala, and all those. Then we have marine. We have Lamu, Kiunga, Malindi, Mombasa, Kilifi, Ukunda, and also Shimoni. Remember, those are, in, when we're talking about inland, we're talking about rivers and rivers and lakes and when i'm talking about marine we are talking about oceans and seas oceans and seas that when it comes to fisheries here they will ask you about fish that are caught in marine and fish that are caught in inland fishing ground so you should also be able to know the fisheries that are caught in the inland and in the marine fishing ground as we can see on the screen on the screen we have uh, inland, we have tilapia, we have Nile patch, we have trout, we have lungfish, we have shellfish, we have catfish, we have black bass, mudfish, daga, which is omena, salmon, and snapper. You can see them on the screen. Just put them on the screen kindly by director so that our viewers can be able to see the fish that are caught in marine and inland fishing ground. They are there. You can see them very, very clearly. 
marine we have we have kingfish sardines tuna bonito black skin we have queenfish mullet sailfish parrot we have crabs oysters shrimps and also lobsters then still on fishing candidates should know the problem facing fishing problem facing fishing and this problem we are dealing the problem facing fishing we are dealing with the main problem facing fishing so our TY quiz use the number that is uh, on your screen which is the main problem facing fishing in eastern africa which is the main problem facing fishing in eastern africa use that number to give us the correct answer still on fishing candidates should also be able to compare fishing in kenya and in japan remember japan is one of the most developed countries fishing in kenya and in japan so when you are when you are comparing fishing in kenya and japan when you are comparing fishing in kenya in kenya and japan we have said that kenya is a developing country whereas japan is a is a developed country it has already developed so you can see the comparison between kenya and japan is that most of the points most of the heavy points are on japan side and because kenya is a developing country meaning that we have we don't have sufficient funds number five let us look at multipurpose river projects multipurpose river projects that is an area that is also most examined multipurpose river projects multipurpose river projects so this is an area that is most commonly examined where the candidates will be asked to locate the multipurpose river projects number two you can also be asked you can also be asked to locate the rivers on which they are located on which rivers are they located and then the candidate can also be asked about the main reason main reason for establishment main reason for establishment of these multipurpose river projects then also you can be asked to give out um which country in which countries are they located so as a candidate when you when you have the map of africa when an examiner writes the map of africa draws for you a map of Af of africa for instance for instance if the examiner draws for you the map of africa i'm just giving a sketch if the examiner draws for you the map of africa and then asks you just a minute when the examiner draws for you the map of africa when good if an examiner draws for you the map for example here and then they put an x here then also we have another one here we have another one then you also have another one now look here if this map is here and they are uh, you are at the main function of this marked x the main reason for establishment of this x first of all you cannot be able to know before you do what you locate them and we have already seen them on the screen on the multipurpose projects the, the the ones that are being commonly examined and then still on the multipurpose projects the most uh, commonly examined area is also the river tana the river tana we will look it on this we will look it at it on the screen the river tana has got it is also known as seven forks why seven forks because it is built on the uh, it is built along seven dams and these seven dams a candidate should be able to know one the ones that were completed and the ones that were not completed there were only two uh, dams on river tana that were never completed and these were these are grand falls we have grand falls i think you can see them uh, my director will put them on the screen grand falls and mutonga grand falls and mutonga and the rest that are remaining you should be able to uh, to say which year were they which year were they built so our ty quiz is
use the number that is down there, our TY quiz is, which one of the following is the main problem facing multipurpose river projects? That is our TY quiz. Which one of the following is the main problem facing multipurpose river projects? So use that number that is, uh, uh, that is on screen to give us the correct answer. The next area is called wildlife and tourism. Wildlife and tourism is another area that we will look we want to look at. Wildlife and tourism. This is an area that is most commonly examined in the KCPE. So in the KCPE, do not assume that the definitions of wildlife to tourism and three conservation measures. You should be able to identify and know the definitions. Do not assume. Now in wildlife and tourism, wildlife and tourism, the candidate should be able to know one tourist attraction, tourist attractions, two conservation measures, three national parks, and four game reserves. Game reserves. And lastly, tourist destinations. Tourist destinations. These are areas that a candidate should be able to know. Tourist attractions, conservation measures, national parks, game reserves, and tourist destinations. Let us look at main tourist attractions in Eastern Africa. The main tourist attractions in Eastern Africa is wildlife. But TY quiz for candidates and for these teachers, which is the main tourist destination in Kenya? Which is the main tourist destination in Kenya? Which is the main tourist destination in Kenya? So those are the major tourist attractions. Then we have game parks there and game reserves. So a candidate should be able to know, a candidate should be able to know in which country are these national parks and also these game reserves. Then lastly, uh, you, there is also another two quiz on your screen that has been there. The, what are the, some of the similarities and differences between tourists in Kenya and in Swaziland? Tourist attraction in Kenya and Swaziland. Remember, uh, as I've already said earlier, that when you are when you are giving tourists differences between Kenya and any other country, Kenya is a developing country. These other countries are developed countries. So let us look at. Ma the main tourist destinations in Africa on our screen. A country should be able to know in which country are these tourist destinations. First, what is a tourist destination? Tourist destinations, these are areas that tourists would like to visit or areas that tourists visit most. I want us to look at them on the screen so that we can see where are they found. Tourist destinations. My director, tourist destinations in Africa, that is page 13. Uh, as we are still waiting to look at that, another area that is most commonly examined is uh, trade. The most commonly, another area that is most commonly examined is trade. Is trade. Now, what is trade? Is the exchange of goods. And the most a commonly question that is also asked is about the uh, exchange of goods and services. Now on trade, you should know the trading blocks. You can see them on the screen, the trading blocks. We have, we have five, uh, four trading blocks. That is ECOWAS, SADC, Commerce, and EAC. I only indicated the OAU and the AU because it is somehow related to that. So as a country should be able to know the headquarters, and the years that they were formed, as you can see on the screen. But I want you to note about SADC, that SADC, it was formed in 1980 as SADC, but it later changed to this one. It later changed to SADC uh, in 1992. TY quiz for you. In an exam, you will be asked which one of the following is not a member state of SADC. Which one of the following is not a member state of SADC? So as a candidate should be able to know the member states of ECOWAS, know the member states of SADC, know the member states of COMESA, know the members of EAC, OAU, and AU. Then on, still on trade, 
you should also be able to know Kenya's imports and Kenya's exports. What do we import as a country and what do we export as a nation? Imports, these are goods that we buy or that come or that are manufactured. They are mainly, uh, they come from other countries, imports. Then exports is what we take to other countries. As you can see, in Kenya, our main imports is manufactured or finished, finished products. Our main imports is Eastern Africa are manufactured or finished products. They are also there on your screen. Then on exports, our main exports, these are, uh, they come from Eastern Africa and they are mainly agricultural uh, materials. We take them, uh, they are mainly, the ones who take them to other countries, they are agricultural materials. The ones that come into our countries, they are manufactured or uh, are uh, also finished products. Then something else, that is on a thread, so you should be able to know imports and exports. Our TY quiz is on a thread, on a thread, on a thread, our TY quiz is, which is the main problem facing thread? Which is the main problem facing thread? Use the number that is on your screen to give us your answer. Which is the main uh, problem facing trade in Africa. The last area is called urbanization. Urbanization is also an, an area that is most commonly examined. Urbanization. In urbanization, one, you are tested about major towns, especially in Kenya. Major towns in Kenya and also their characteristics their characteristics and then how they started how they started and then lastly you can also be asked their location for example if they draw the map of africa and then they locate a town will you be able to identify that town as a candidate so let us look at uh, major towns in kenya and how they started major towns in kenya and how they started some of the major towns in Kenya, we have Nairobi, we have Thika, we have Mombasa, we have Nakuru, we have Eldoret, we have Malindi. So we will look at these towns and how they started on the screen. And I hope uh, we are going there in a few minutes. They are there. Nairobi town started as a railway port. You can see it there. So it is now you as, the, as a candidate to look at to look at, you should be able to, uh, to be in a position to look at the years that, that they started. Like for example, Nairobi. So Nairobi started in 19, uh, well, it started as a railway depot. Mombasa started as a trading center for Arab traders. Kisumu started as a fishing village on the shores of Lake Victoria. Eldoret started as a market and a collection center. Thika Town started as an, a, an agricultural market center. Nakuru started as an agricultural collection. Be very careful between Eldoret, Nakuru, and Thika because they have some similarity of agricultural products. We have said Eldoret, Eldoret started as a market and agricultural collection center. Thika started as an agricultural market center and in a cool started as an agricultural collection center. So be very careful when you are identifying these two. Our TY quiz in that area is, which is the oldest town in Kenya? Which is the oldest town in Kenya? That is our TY quiz. Use the number that is on your screen to give us the correct answer. Which is the oldest town in Kenya? TY number two, which is the second largest industrial town in Kenya? Which is the second uh, largest industrial town in Kenya? Use that number to give us the correct answer. So, lastly, transport. Transport. On transport, the candidate should know the following. One, major roads. Two, major railways. Three, international airports. International airports. And all these, a candidate should be able 
to locate them on the map of Africa. You should be able to locate them on the map of Africa. Are you able to identify the major roads in railways and also international airports? When you're talking about major roads, for example, we have the Great North Road. The Great North Road. You can be asked, they can draw for you the map of Africa. You can be asked which one of the following is a, is a major road marked X. So, so that means you should be able to identify the major roads. Same to railways. For example, the Tazara. They can ask you, the Tazara Railway runs from where to where? You should be able to identify where and areas and also countries that uh, passes through this Tazara Railway. International airports, you should also be able to know international airports in uh, Kenya and also in Africa or in Eastern Africa. Then something else on major roads, uh, on transport, you should also be able to know road signs. You should be able to know road signs. You should also be able, they are now on your screen. Some of the parts are, that I've mentioned, we have road signs. We have major railway networks. We also have uh, international airports. We have traffic lights, causes of road accidents, and also first aid, safety points to cross a busy road. When we'll be looking at these areas that we have mentioned on our screen, at KCPE level, at KCPE level we'll be looking at which terms do examiners use when they are setting such questions. On road signs, there are three types of road signs, so the candidate should be able to identify the three types of road signs. Then major railway networks we have talked about, major roads we have talked about, international we have talked about, traffic lights, traffic lights, they can ask you which one shows, which one tells the pedestrian to go, which one tells the, the, the which color tells the pedestrian to stop. So on traffic lights, you should know the colors. Traffic lights, you should know about the colors. The colors. That is very, very important for you. Then on first aid, reasons for first aid, which is to save life. And then safety points to cross a busy road, which is a safety point to cross a busy road. Then there's this question that came in the, I cannot remember the, the year. They were testing you on, are you able to tell uh, look right, look left, look right again, then when the road is clear, you cross the road. So that is all about transport, and our TY quiz is, the major road that passes from Mombasa to Lagos is called Dash. The major road that crosses from Mombasa to Lagos is called Dash. Use the number that you can see on the screen to give us your answer. Now, students and teachers who are watching us, I want us now to look at how KCPE has been setting all the areas that we have mentioned. How are examiners, how have they been uh, setting these questions in KCPE from 2010 to 2022? From 2010 to 2022. So I want us to start with from 2010 to 2013, we look at how have examiners, how have they been setting these uh, exams or these specific areas that we have looked at. So can you take me to the next page on the KCP summary setting from 2010 to 2013? That is now very clear. Now, as you can see on your screen, you will find out that Mining was set in 2010, 2011, 2013, and 2014. And just to summarize that part, you will find out that in 2010, in 2010, mining was set, multipurpose was set, forestry was set, and then industries, fishing, and wildlife was not set in 2010. Up to urbanization there down, it was not set in 2010. Then in 2011, out of the areas that we have looked at, forestry was not set in 2011. In 2012, trade was not set. Then in 2013, we have multipurpose real projects and forestry was not set in 2013. So, and if you can see on the screen, you can be able to see on 2010 what was set about mining, what was set about multipurpose real projects, what was set about industries, and what was set about wildlife until you go to urbanization. 
Let us look at from 2014, the next page, 2014 now to 2017. Let us look at 2014 to 2017. 2014 to 2017. How have these, how have the examiners, how have they been looking at this as they said there, KCPE, 2014 to 2017 is the next page. So that we can be able to see the similarities and differences between what we have been looking at. In 2014, out of the areas that we have looked at in 2014, fishing was not set. Fishing was not set. That is in 2014. If you look at in 2015, we only had forestry, industries, wildlife, tourism, and transport, and it was asking about first aid and the location of the Great North Road that we have already covered here. So that is very, very important. Then if you look at my purpose river projects, you can see 2014 was Aswan High Dam, 2015 did not come. 2016 Aswan High Dam, like that as we proceed we'll be looking at how uh, they were set. Then on industries we are processing 2014, they asked about processing industry. 2016 they asked about Bamburi factory, why is it located where it is, we have covered that. Then also we can see processing industry. Let us look at now 2018, which is the last part, to 2022. 2018 to 2022. So I'll go slowly because uh, I want everybody, to, those who are watching us, to view clearly. In 2018, we only had two areas again that were not set. That is multipurpose river projects and also wildlife multi-purpose river projects and wildlife. Then in 2019, and you can see from 2018 to 2022, mining was set all through. I will give you a summary at the end after we have we are done with that. If you look at multi-purpose river projects, 2018, that question was not set. 2019, it was not set. And remember, 2022, it is talking about Aswan High Dam, and we have looked at the previous years where we said in, uh, in 2014, Aswan High Dam was set. 2016, Aswan High Dam was set. 2022, Aswan High Dam was set. What about 2023? That one you will revise with your teachers in your classes. Look at forestry. Forestry, it came in 2020, it came 2018 to 2021. And then in natural forests, candidates should be able to know and understand why does the government preserve natural forests and why do they also preserve planted forests? So that is your TY quiz for the teachers and for the students who are watching us. Why do the government protect natural forests or why do they preserve natural forests and why do they preserve uh, planted forests? Then, as we move down to uh, wildlife, uh, just move down there, wildlife, tourism, trade, transport to urbanization. Thank you. If you look at wildlife, tourism, trade, transport, and, and urbanization, all those areas were set. Tourism was set up to 20, 2022. Trade was not set. And then in trade, the trading blocks is very important. Comesa has been repeating. Comesa has been repeating, and you can see it on the screen. Then on the transport, look at 2019, crossing a busy road. Where are students supposed to cross a busy road? Look at road signs, which is also there. And then railway. You can see transport. In transport, road signs came in 2020 and 2022, meaning that it is also an area that is most commonly examined. If you come to urbanization, I gave a TY quiz on the oldest town. It came in 2018. Just to go and confirm which numbers are these. Eldoret Town, locating Thika Town on the map of Kenya. The candidates should also be able to do that. Then, still on urbanization, that question that is was that was said in 2022 factors influencing population distribution in urban centers. Which factor is that? So let us now come to the last summarized area, the KCPE summary now, which covers what we have already mentioned in today's lesson. From 20, now from 2010, 
all the way to 2022. Then I will leave for you here 2023 where you will be asking yourselves according to the findings that eh, we will have already gotten. Let us uh, go there, my director on page 20, the last area. That is it now. Let us start with the mining. If you look at the screen, Mining has been coming from 2010 up to 2022. Mining has been coming from 2010 up to 2022, apart from 2015. 2015, that question did not come. So as a teacher and as a candidate, what does that tell you about 2023? If mining came all these years, what does it tell about 2023? Do a, lo a lot of uh, revision. Let us look at multipurpose river projects. Multipurpose river projects has been coming in not, uh, not fluently, but you can see 2010, 2012, it came. Then 2020, 2021, 2022, it came. There is some relationship between 2017, 2018, 2019 where multi-purpose project was not set. Then 2020, 2022, we have there. What does it tell about 2023? That's now a question for you. Look at forestry. Forestry from 2010 to 2013, it missed 2011 and 2013. Then from 2014 up to last year, 2022, that question has been coming. What does that tell you about uh, forestry in 20? 23. Look at industries. Industries did not come in 2010. From 2010 to 2022, industries has been set severally all those years. What does that tell you in 2023? Fishing. Fishing, it is just like multi-purpose river projects. 2010, it was set. Three years. No, 2010, it was not set. Three years, 2011, 12, and 13, that question came. Two years, it missed. 2016, it came. 2017, it missed. 2018, it came. 2019, it missed. Like that, you can see that uh, uh, that flow. What does it tell you about 2022? Look at wildlife. Wildlife in 2010 did not come. In 2016, that question did not come. In 2018 and 19, did not come. From 2020 to 2022, a question on what life has been coming. What does it tell you? Then, look at tourism. Tourism, from 2010 to 2022, that question has been coming. So it is now you as, as a teacher to revise with your students, as a student to do more revision on that. Then look at trade. Trade came two years, consecutive two years. Then it missed 2012. Then 2013, 2014, it came. Then again, two years, 2016, 2017, that question missed. It missed. Then I look at from 2017 to 2022, a question on trade has been coming. So what does that tell you as a teacher and as a candidate? Look at now trade, a transport, transport. A question on transport has been coming from 2010 to 2022, apart from one year, that is 2016. Look at uh, urbanization, which is our last area. Just move it up kindly. Urbanization, so that we can also be able to see. Urbanization. Urbanization. If you look at urbanization, 2010, that question did not come. I want us to, I want it to be very clear so that you can be able to view it well and come up with your own findings. In 2010, a question on urbanization missed. Then 2011 to 2014, that question has been coming on still urbanization. Then 2015, that question did not come on urbanization. Then from 2016 up to 2020, that question has been coming. 2021, it did not come. Then 2022, that question was set. What does that tell you? It tells you the specified areas that we have looked at today. 
they are the areas that examiners look at. Remember, resources and economic activities is an area that covers most of the marks in KCP in social studies. Out of 60 questions, out of 60 questions, out of 60 questions in social studies, we are looking at the topic that we have covered today, economic activities, economic activities, it is a topic that covers the largest area. And in this topic, the, the examiner will either set between 18 to 20 questions, at least. That is at least, yeah, at least 18 questions and at most, 20 questions because it is one of the uh, the widest topics in social studies so as you revise let us take this topic very very uh, serious it is the largest topic and therefore it carries the, the highest number of marks as you can see so if examiner sets 20 that means you have 40 to get 60 so today we have already handled this topic so use the numbers that we have in case of any question. Ask us, chat with us on WhatsApp. You can still text the same number so that we can get feedback on, you, on your side. So that brings me to the end of today's lesson. I have been your teacher, Teacher Duncan Guadima. I'm a social studies and CRE teacher. I'm also a KCPE uh, facilitator for social studies and CRE, preparing candidates for national exams. Lastly, I'm also an online coordinator. And from what we have learned, there is an e-learning platform for you to go and search for questions for exams on the topics topical questions it is uh, it is an e-learning platform it is an e-learning platform and this e-learning platform you can visit this uh, website you can visit this website look for questions it is an and it is an e-learning platform where you can print exams download the exams and you will get automated answers. After you have done them, the answers will come automatic on your side. So you can visit the website, go to the student's dashboard and sign in. That is what we do on online. I want to appreciate all of you for being, concentrating and participating in today's lesson. And with that, that brings me to the end of today's session. Until next time, I want to say goodbye and success to all the candidates of the year 2023. Until next time, I want to say goodbye.